Rodney Morris exclusive educational content new at SPM Media Discipline and Development with instructors like Jackie Carroll. Learn from top rated industry professionals with SPM exclusive content from professionals like Brian Superman Polly and more. Improve your game now. Go to SneakyPeatMafia.com, Discipline and Development tab, and sign up for the $1 a month exclusive content access now while prices last. Hey, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to SPM TV, our new broadcast that we're launching. Really exciting guests tonight. We're getting out started a few minutes later than we wanted to. Some technical difficulties setting things up. It is what it is. As we go on, it's going to get more robust for you guys. As we said, tonight we do have the entire broadcast crew here. Garrett has joined us again. Kat, the chief editor, myself, the creative executive officer, and I am personally really excited to announce our very first interview guest with the SPM TV re-release. It happens to be somebody who has a lot of following in the billiards industry. And if you guys don't know who I'm talking about, well, you will now. We have Dominic Esposito, the drill instructor, here with us tonight. Dominic, how are you doing tonight? Jake, great. Thank you. And to your whole team, uh, it's such an honor and a privilege to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for doing this. I know it was kind of like a short notice. Hey, do you want to come on? And we, we appreciate the short notice stuff because sometimes in, in this podcast, you know, other stuff falls through and other people can't come through. We want to make sure we have a decent amount of content coming through and really good people going through. Now, let's talk a little bit about, okay, so we get it. I get it. I know it. But there's some people out there who might not understand why your nickname in the industry is the drill instructor. And I'll preface this a little bit by upon doing some research, um, in-depth research, other than just watching your videos that I see coming by and I watch them, you know, um, upon doing some in-depth research, you have videos with millions and millions of views on them on YouTube. So it's not like you're not nobody in the billiards industry. Practically everybody should know you. So if you guys don't know who Dominic Esposito is, you can find him. All of his videos are on YouTube. And tell us a little bit about how you run your drill instructor platform in the billiards industry. Um, you know, I appreciate you uh, uh, making it appear that I'm extremely large, but um, with the, I, I I think one of the recent counts, they guessed there's about 46 million um, people in the billiard industry. And so if I've got a following of a half a million to a million people, give or take, um, now that makes it a small drop in the bucket when you compare that to 136. <laughs> well, I, you know, and that's interesting because I've been following the statistics too. I do a lot of research in the billiards industry uh, every day almost. And what I found recently was that the billiards industry has roughly about 2.5 million professional players and a large handful of hobbyists or followers. Uh, to come the other day, I got a phone call from a guy from Kuwait and uh, he was telling me he's one of the best players in, in his country. 
and uh, he was most concerned with wanting to talk about something that was uh, an interest to him. And then he wound up wanting to know how to get some of the billiard glasses that I wear. And, uh, I do get calls from people all over the world on a fairly frequent basis. That That is fantastic. Um, and that, sh again, shows with the analytics that I can see on your, on your stuff. So, again, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Um, in in the kind of before we went live in our broadcast, we were having a little bit of conversation. <clears throat> and you mentioned a few things that I kind of want to touch on a little bit later in the show. And I'll, and I'll bring those up, just let people get a little bit more insight into who you are yourself, as opposed to just being the billiards instructor. And let, let's let's talk about, you said you were doing a, a clinic soon. Is that correct? You do cl clinics? Well, um, since uh, the end of the 2016 touring year, um, at that time, um, uh, the only reason I can probably say uh, that there was a great emphasis on getting into the social media market was um, my my marketing support director, who was Denise McNerney at the time, who was with me for several years. Uh, she created all of these foundation bases for me to function with. So I just had to focus on doing what I knew how to do and she ran the rest. And when we came home from the 2016 tour, she said, okay, we're gonna do something different next year. Uh, just get yourself ready. You have to trust me. And in the meantime, uh, by the uh, late October of 2016, she had me doing something on what at the time called Facebook Live. I had no idea what that meant. And she talked me through the mechanics of it. And, and uh, I, think I, I, I think my first Facebook Live was like 90 minutes long. And then uh -uh. They, were, they were typically an hour and 15 to an hour and 20 minutes at a time because I could teach several hours at a time without running on a material. Uh, well, I was getting an amazing following within the second or third week. I had, I had like 38,000 people that we reached on the program. And when it was time to come into the tour season, which is generally April through September, well, in, in January, we start setting up the dates for the year. And she said, okay, remember the part where I said you had to trust me? Um, here it comes. We're not going on tour this year. You're staying right there at home in your studio. And I was like, yeah. well, of course, I was completely uncomfortable with the idea. <laughs> I really fought tooth and nail about it. I trusted her. I did it. At the end of 2017, our net, our net profit for business, as opposed to being on the road for six months, just staying home and doing live media like this, uh, we were 5% over the previous 2016 touring year and 2018 and 19 and 20 and 21 every year has done. I have not done a single tour event since 2016. Well, well that kind of, that, that kind of flows in line too. Now, like you're kind of sort of ahead of the game of where the industry shifted into a virtual type of position. I mean, just look at what happened at the Moscone cup. How many people, <laughs> Were you know they canceled the pre matches, the warm ups. Then SV, you know, he wasn't allowed to come because of a potential exposure. And yeah, exactly. We ever we all everybody we all know it. We roll our eyes. It's um, it's a difficult situation that a lot of industries are facing, and it has now started to seep into the billiards industry. You happen to be way ahead of the game with your following, with your traction, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, because of what you did starting in 2016. And this is- I look truly to the vision of Denise though, because it was not my vision, it was hers. It was my point, look, pulled my hair out thinking it was not gonna work. And <laughs> but she was right. And, and as a result of that, and of course that was her responsibility, just as you're doing what is yours. Uh, this year, however, is going to be the first time uh, we are going to go back out on the road, and um, I've decided to do something very unique and different, and that is with um, a couple of my best buddies, uh, Tom Rossman, Dr. Q, uh, Randy Gottlecker out of Texas, uh, Tom Rossman out of Indiana, and I. we decided this year that we're going to do a six-city tour. And uh, we're basically going to put on um, a Friday night exhibition for a few hours of lots of fun, the same type of a format like Tom Rossman and I did with USO stuff, uh, Drill Instructor and Tom and Dr. Q. 
Uh, but on Saturday and Sunday, we're going to follow it up with two day pool schools. And we've just booked the first one and we're going to start in Orlando, Florida at a beautiful, fabulous place called Racks Billiards, which is oh, right. diamonds tables, a really classy joint, an amazing restaurant. And um, uh, Pedro, the owner, is a really class guy. And the, the place is packed every night of the week. It's just such a high run quality place. Well, March 26th and 27th, uh, the three guys, we're gonna, it's going to be called the Masters, uh, the Masters Pool Academy. And with Tom Rossman and Randy Golicker, my, myself, uh, we're, uh, we're launching and we've already got people booking. The class will book out and uh, people are contacting me personally just to get registered. And that's because I'm, I'm here available. At, Dominic? Pardon me? Where are the locations going to be held? <clears throat> okay, so um, I can't reveal where the other five are yet. Uh, we do have them uh, positioned so that we're going all over the country. Uh, I can't say where the other five are yet. And the reason for that is, um, well, I'll tip my hand just a little bit. Uh, one of them in particular, because he's a really great friend of mine, um, is uh, Phil Wyndham, who owns the Chattanooga Billiard Clubs. And that will probably be one of the locations I will tell you about. We do really want to try and spread out far enough with these five or six cities so that we can get people from all, within any general vicinity, if you can drive a day or fly in a couple of few hours. Um, and the first people that are already booked are actually already from out of town. So we'll have hotel accommodations and things for discounts uh, available. Uh, this that, first one will be in Orlando, Florida. With that being with that being said, I think I might have heard about this because of some of the connections you know uh, we have in the billiards industry. Um, and when you talk about Randy uh, Getlicker, uh, he's actually working with uh, Mr. Swain too. You know, him and Mr. Swain are talking together. So yeah, like I, I said, I might have heard a little <clears> bit about <throat> this. If one of those areas could be out here, like Reno, Nevada, West Coast, I'll make sure I'm there to film it. We will, we will definitely be there. Um, I can tell you that we're going to make sure that we can cover um, the north, the central, uh, uh, or excuse me, the east, the central, and the west, and cover it from north to central to south. And we're going to try to hit six main points throughout uh the country so anybody can try to get to us yes nice yeah you just make sure and make sure it's well known when you're around here i'll come get some fun. i won't do it without you knowing i promise <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get some b-roll for spm tv for you for an ad or something you know what i mean <laughs> anyway um, i'm happy to do it i love to support you guys yeah, so let's, you have let's see what yeah, thank you, you Dominic, been with us, go ahead um, garrett since about 2014 um, on and off. Um, and we um, met in person a few times. Um, once was at the Super Billiards Expo. I don't know if you remember that in 2014, Dominic. Mm -hmm. um, you had a really big gathering there and you would do these clinics um, live at the, um, at the Super Billiards Expo. <clears throat> and basically all the traffic from all the other booths would gather around yours and kind of <laughs> condense <laughs> right around the, the drill instructor area. And you have your entire setup there um, all camoed out with the, um, um, the background and stuff like that. And you're very themed, very methodical about what you do. <laughs> so, and, and I know maybe, you know, mine's going too, okay? But just look at Garrett. He's been working with me for how many oh, years? Thanks, and it's just oh, like, shoo! Well, you know what? That's because we I never have a bad hair day. <laughs> that's because <laughs> that's because I tell we you. We have an average of six hundred dollars a year on haircuts. <laughs> we get too many benefits to this. We don't have to buy all the hair product garbage. Yeah. <laughs> nope. it's, it's, it's... Take it off. Just take it off. No, but I, I like wanted to. Time. I wanted to mention that because one of the things you said was you were asked to do something new and whatnot, right? And I kind of was like, um, I'm kind of over here bumping Garrett in the shoulder a little bit virtually, like, hey, buddy, you know, it does, what does that sound like? Because here at SPM TV or SPM Media LLC, we really are doing a whole bunch of new stuff coming out 
specific to the billiards industry and having people like you involved <clears throat> here to talk about your experiences, what you're doing, your business, et cetera, et cetera. That's all part of it, right? There's not been nearly enough coverage in the media industry over the last 15 or 20 years of billiards. There was a time in the past when I was young, there was a lot of coverage. I remember watching those big matches on ESPN, on the old tube television, and having to hit it sometimes <laughs> when static went out. You know what I mean? Well, what's the, best? the difference yeah. is, if I may interrupt here, uh, yeah. is the billiard industry has transitioned from one section to another. So um, when it was really, really popular in the um, early to mid um, 90s, um, that was before the advent of the true internet and when it came out and when it was launched. Um, and then right around that time, there was a drop in um, immediate coverage because everybody was stuck in front of their computer or their smartphone. Um, and then now with the advent of social media, it seems like everybody's <clears throat> coming back together again. Um, and in my opinion, the leagues have helped tremendously with that because they have taken um, the players that wouldn't normally get together on a given night um, and given them a new platform to um, compete on um, and compete in an open platform so that there's no real, real pressure, like you're playing for thousands and thousands of dollars. But between social media and leagues, I think that that's uh, a tremendous um, <coughs> advantage into our industry. Would you agree, Dominic? Well, I do. Uh, the, the formation of leagues in the mid-70s was critical because it allowed pool halls to have a, an ability to survive. As, as, as things were happening in the industry and the billiard industry has always, always had a struggle with a, a sort of a dark side. Let's just call it that. Um, and the dark side is usually always the result of the people involved want it for themselves first. The things that seem to succeed the most are when you're trying to give it away to others for their benefit first, and then you get the fruit from that. And I've certainly discovered that myself. People have asked me over and over, why aren't you monetizing your shows? You've got millions of people. Why aren't you monetizing commercials and things like that? You know what? I, it's necessary to work with the way where you can give to the fact that you love doing this and you're going to receive the benefit from that. You know, if you farm your land well, you're going to get to eat off it too. And so, that's basically what we're doing here. That'll, that, that's a wonderful segue point to lead us into our next segment here. What we are going to do right now, everybody, is we are going to take a very quick commercial break here. And we got to play the sponsors, right? We got to show the sponsors on the show. That's what they're there for. Going to go practice while you're doing that. Um, that's fine <laughs> because no one's going to hear us while they're watching the sponsors. So thank you, Dominic. We'll be right back in about three and a half or so minutes. All right, folks. Yeah, you're good. exclusive educational content new at SPM Media Discipline and Development with instructors like Jackie Carroll. Learn from top-rated industry professionals with SPM exclusive content from professionals like Brian Superman Pauly and more. Improve 
your game now. Go to SneakyPeatMafia.com, Discipline and Development tab, and sign up for the $1 a month exclusive content access now while prices last. And welcome back to SPM TV, everybody. Jake Sovey, Creative Executive Director. We have Garrett Troop here, CEO. Catherine Day, she is our chief uh, or uh, content blah. I just totally lost it, and I feel like a buffoon. I'm so sorry. Kat, what's your title? Editor in Chief and Content Creator. Okay, there we go. <laughs> and then, of course, everybody, if you don't know already, Mr. Dominic Esposito, the drill instructor. Now, we were talking a little bit about the history of the billiards industry and how it had kind of a dip. And then at the end there, you're talking about how the social media is bringing it back. And current trends right now, current trends are showing that um, the billiards industry is on an uprise over the last three years in terms of its market value. Right now, it's sought to be about $637 million in total for the year of 2021. So no, I made more than that. So when you're saying, <laughs> excuse me, 2022. Yeah, I'll uh, be doing that in September, Jake. Yeah, you know what? I'm still dealing with taxes. By the time I finally get it turned around, it'll be 2023. Yeah. <laughs> Yank the carpet right there. <laughs> Anyway, okay, so six hundred thirty-seven point two three million dollars in twenty twenty-two. Realistically, in comparison to other industries, that's significantly small. So that begs me yeah. to ask, um, and and you know, you mentioned it. People ask you all the time. I have to ask you now, with the following that you have, why haven't you um, done things like Google ads or just even the, the automated ads that YouTube places in and make yourself some additional money on the stuff that people follow. I get the concept of giving back and getting in more in return. We happen to I'm going to tell you the, I'm going to tell you the actual honest to goodness truth. Um, um, since I lost Denise a few years ago and with the, um, with the attempt of some people who claimed I can help you and then actually couldn't fulfill um, what they, you know, I know they just wanted to be a part of it, but when I gave them the opportunity to say, okay, put your, put your work forward and let's see if, if, if you can, um, there were difficulties again in each specific case. So for me, the actual truth is I don't have somebody to do it for me, or I don't technically know how to do it. I'm really an expert at what I do. I am a professional pool instructor and pool coach at that uh, on that platform. And I'm I don't mean to say this to be offensive, but I'm not a pool I'm not a professional pool player who's broke and gives lessons because I need the money. I I charge 200 bucks an hour. I'm probably one of the most expensive pool instructors in the nation. It's 1,300 bucks a day to spend with me. And, uh, and I do that because the, I just know when I'm standing there working with you, I feel like that's what it's worth. But that's beside the point. The, uh, the essence of what we're doing for the market and how to build it, I am literally just coasting on everything Denise ever did because I only know how to continue to do what I'm doing on Tuesday night, right. Facebook Live. And 
I've been asking for over a year for somebody to tell me, well, how can I make live on YouTube at the same time as Facebook? Because well, yeah, I just don't have that technical background. Well, again, we'll talk after the show or an, another time, another day, and definitely. But that's the reason I haven't done commercials and monetizing and that. So I just personally have, don't know how to do it. She was going to be the one to do it for you. And when she passed, there was nobody. Yeah, there. she got ramped up and then got sick and uh, disappeared and. Unfortunately, uh, you, you know, but she was just the most wonderful person when she worked with me. She was just so capable because number one, she knew pool and she knew media and she knew marketing. What a combination, right? That, that and, well, that's a that's a very hard to come by combination in the building. Exactly. Industry. You can find the people who know media, but if they don't know pool, there's a major ingredient missing. You know, it's like one of the legs missing on the uh, on the stool. It's a big deal. <laughs> very, very true. Uh, when I came into the billiards industry full with media, so I've I've been myself personally. I played a lot. I'm more of a hobbyist player. I never joined a league or a tournament, uh, done any tournaments yet. But I have definitely played a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, both sober and just for fun, and you know, going out with the boys at the bar and having having okay. some fun there. Okay. Um, and so. But I also educated myself on how to play pool by watching things like your online videos and these other things and some instructional content because, let's just face it, educated people, we know this, you know, you can't go into something without doing research and say that you're good at it, right? Or you know what you're talking about. So you got to do yes. a little bit of research first and actually figure out what it is that's going on behind the scenes of this whole thing and what a lot of people in the world don't take into account is that billiards is maybe and quite possibly the most mentally uh, challenging sport on the face of the planet due to the fact that you have not just your emotional pressures that you're going through. Oh, this guy, he's, he's psyching me out or whatever, or he's shooting better than me right now, or geez, I missed that shot. You have your mathematics, your, your, your geometry, your physics, you're, uh, it's almost like a chess game at the same time. Can I place this here? Where can I place this there? Da, 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 da. And, you know, and it can be tacking on the body too, just not as much as maybe football, right? Obviously, so. Well, it, it's true, but, it, it, yeah, but let, me, let, me, let me say something on top of what you're saying. It's really, really critical. Pool, while you are declaring it to be one of the most mentally complex sports, at the same time, it is also one of the only sports that has the highest population of participants who have no coaching. Oh, it creates yeah. the problem. We have, we have the highest participation of people individually engaged with other people who are just throwing advice at you like, like they actually have some sense of concept of value and, and they really don't. And so people do not accept coaching. They don't get a good instruction the mental game is 50% of this game. The mechanical game is the other 50%. Well, just imagine without coaching, 100% of your mental game isn't even being addressed. And you're not doing anything to formally then address your mechanical game, except you've got people giving you pot shot advice along the way. And this is what creates the real problem. So when I have the opportunity to work with players at every level, when they begin to hear me start teaching and explaining things that are happening, I, their, their eyes just bug out because they're like, I have never heard these kinds of things. And I could probably tell you that there's really less than maybe three people in the nation that actually are, I'm one of them. I could tell you Tom Rossman is the other one of them. We are professionally, academically trained to train professional sports mental activity and, so, and so the mental of the game. Let's talk about that a little bit. And, um, you have a handful of certifications, correct, to do so, your instruction. Yes. Why don't you just go ahead and list them off for everybody if they don't already? Well, know. okay, we can, and and of course that's nice. Um, it it helps prove to people that they should at least consider talking to you. No, no, no accomplishment is is the the perfect factor of of proving you know what you're talking about because we certainly know a lot of people who have accomplished much but they're not they're not that good in general uh, but of course i am a, a pbi ma master instructor i'm a four-time bca uh ring game champion 
Uh, I have been formally trained for five years when I started when I was 15 years old till I turned 19 years old when I became a professional pool player at that time. So I was formally trained as a to become a professional straight pool player, which is exceptional. Straight pool is the most complex form. Yeah. Every game of pool comes from straight pool. Yeah. Eight ball, nine ball, ten ball, one pocket, seven ball. Every game comes from the game of straight pool. And today, you you only see it almost coming back again, almost coming back again. But with Tom Parker, who was my instructor at the time, who has since passed, at that time, I was so trained on just drills, drills, drills. When the time of my life finally came to the season of saying, you know, it might be a cool idea to write a book. Well, Pro Scale Drills, that, that was the series. And then every book is about 52 drills, give or take. There's 10 volumes, and they're drills, drills, drills. And so when I finally showed up uh, in, in, in Vegas uh, at the Riviera uh, one year to do an exhibition, people just started calling me, hey, man, you're like a drill instructor. We're going to call you sergeant. You're like a drill sergeant because all I would teach is drills. When they would do the evening with the stars and every one of us got a pool table and people can pay money for raising money for the BEF, uh, the Billion Education Foundation, people would come to my pool table and you get three chances to be able to successfully accomplish one of my drills. Ah, That's how you played me. You, you, know, you played Allison Fisher on one table next to me, or, or you played uh, uh, one of the other Phil Johnny Archer on the next table over there next to me, and they're all playing eight ball or nine ball games. So what? Let's come over here and let's see if you can't finish this drill. And all of a sudden, my table would start getting the audience. That's how Randy Gottlick and I, uh, Randy Gottlicker and I ever got acquainted because at that time with the BCA, he's the one who brought me in to do those things. So they started calling me a drill instructor and a drill sergeant. And that's how people recognize me. And one day I decided to just go out and buy an outfit and see if I couldn't start looking like, and, and I was embarrassed. Listen, I was embarrassed. I'm going to tell you a little true story. I traveled, I traveled another year uh, when I decided to do this. I went to Vegas and I, and I, I was so mentally wired. I had my entire drill instructor outfit. And the first day I was dressed in my hotel room as I was getting ready to leave, I looked in the mirror and I was so embarrassed. And that's when I actually realized I brought no other clothes. <laughs> and so I was a mess. I went downstairs, a complete wreck, feeling like my underwear were outside my pants. I mean, I was just a mess. Uh... And well, when people finally, when I walked in the room and I blew the whistle and I started yelling, but I had dark sunglasses on in my hat, nobody really knew it was me. And they were like stunned. And I took the hat off and the glasses and I said, hey, everybody, it's me. And they all started shouting and clapping and thinking it was the greatest thing they ever saw. And all of a sudden I realized, oh my gosh, I can do this. And from that day forward, I began to become officially, and that's what the cartoon character, the drill instructor, that's the persona. When I'm actually teaching live or in live performance, I have a persona that I bring on, and it is the persona of being a drill instructor. Shut up and do what I tell you, or I'll make you do so many push-ups, your arms will fall off. Yeah. So I, I do this with my audiences. I'm, I'm whacking at them. They, want to, they raise their hand up when they're on the table. I pull out a big, four-inch, thick, wide piece of Gorilla tape, and I put it over their hands. I say, now, you're going to keep that hand down on the table now? You know, I do wild, funny things, but when people come to see me in person, in, in in alone for private time, they go. You know, I you're really different when you're um, uh, not doing your. I say, well, it's my show. It's, it's the show. persona. It's a show. And yeah. and when I perform as the drill instructor, I virtually never miss. I have the most incredible results. Even I'm impressed half the time. Uh, and I'm laughing inside, thinking, holy cow, I made that shot. That's incredible. I just you know, did that. So, if you notice, like on last night's show, which I just happened to notice, we I think we went over 15,000 on last night's show already. But the point is, if you hear me talking while I'm shooting, you're going to see my best performance. Remember Minnesota Fox, he never shut up. And he never missed when he was talking. Well, I realized I am constantly teaching 
talking while I am exhibiting. And as I'm doing this, my greatest performance comes in my comfort zone. When I'm telling you what I'm doing as I'm doing it, that's exactly what happens and I do it. Yeah. Absolutely. And when I get really quiet and I can't do that, then all of a sudden other things start to happen. So you had, um, just on. previously mentioned that you started off as a straight pole player. Um, it's a wonderful time that we're in right now as Jason Shaw just broke the world record of running 714 balls in a row without missing a shot. Really proud of him. Uh, when Jason called me several years ago and asked me if I would coach him personally, and at the time, um, his, his wife was not ready to have his first daughter. There were some complications, and right at the last moment, we had to back off of the whole thing, and we never reconnected that. But on his own, his tremendous desire to succeed – and, and do as well as he's done. I'm really so proud of him. What a great job he's done. Um, I would have loved to have been a part of that for him, but he had everything that was already necessary to have the personal uh, propellant to get himself there, which is, by the way, what happens to many players. Okay, for example, visually picture Keith McCready, how he holds his back arm. Kind of ridiculous, right? William Moscone was sidearm. Why? Because with a lack of coaching, but their passion to become that great, and he wrote it, so subsequently, they developed a tremendously highly skilled game. Look at Nick Varner. He's a one-stroke king, yeah. okay? He's got a phenomenal game, and a great, you know, eight-time world champion, you know, BCA Hall of Fame. I mean, super great uh, success, but if you ever stand behind Nick and watch him stroke, you, you can almost go into a panic because his back arm starts to, yeah, boom, and then he lets it go, and the next thing you know, he's right where he needs to be, and, and, and you're paying up. So these guys have not through skillful coaching like we think today of Phil Mickelson, Tiger Woods, and all these other people, uh, you know, uh, Michael Jordan, through having great coaching support, their greatest skills came forward. So what you're saying is, is that they, some of them did do coaching and some of them didn't do coaching, but either way, their dedication, their passion, exactly. their your discipline, your dedication, your desire, your drive, your determination, all those D words like Dominic, you know, all those, those <laughs> the greatest, Drill instructor. You, have to be great. you need great D words in your defining, you know, terminology. <laughs> all right, Dominic. Well, I want to thank you very much for being on the show this evening for us. We're a little bit over our normal time limit here. We do got to um, run the closing ads and the closing of the show. I would love to have you on again in the future. And I would be thrilled to be on as often as you'd like, even once a month, just as we could keep talking about segments. There are so many incredibly great things we can do with the players. And I'd be thrilled to be part, even if we wanted to analyze something we see happening in a match, and we can then bring that into plain English for people. Um, and a number of ways we can, we can evaluate material and product and see why it is and isn't what it's, you're trying to crack it up to be. Just there's a number of ways to help pool players do three things. Love playing this sport more and more, play it better, and really be grateful that they got to be part of it as a part of their life. Yeah, I like, Wouldn't how, that be you said, I like how you said be grateful there too. Yeah, be that's grateful. a big, big part of it. So everybody, thank you for tuning in here to the SPM TV third day broadcast with our uh, very special guest, Dominic Esposito, the drill instructor. There you go. He, he kind of gave you a little insight on why and how and whatnot. So we are going to sign off this evening, folks. Please, Thanks, everybody. there is a possibility, folks, that we may be streaming this like a Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, three days a week versus five days a week. But for this week, I am planning on doing another one tomorrow night. I think we have a couple people lined up already to come on the show as a guest. So stay tuned to SPM TV. If you do want to advertise with us here and help the industry grow because it helps us, it helps you, it helps you know, everybody, right? How are you going to get known unless you're putting it out there? And if you don't mind, remind the players, March 26th and 27th in Orlando, Florida. Uh, they could just contact me for more details. And QB Pool School. Yes, definitely yeah. reach yeah. out to Mr. Esposito there, Dominic, and ask him any questions further from here. He's not shy. And remember, he'll tape, his, tape your hand down to the table. So don't mess up. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining the SPM stream. You guys have a wonderful evening, and we'll talk to you later.
Rodney Morris exclusive educational content new at SPM Media Discipline and Development with instructors like Jackie Carroll. Learn from top rated industry professionals with SPM exclusive content from professionals like Brian Superman Polly and more. Improve your game now. Go to sneakypeatmafia.com, discipline and development tab, and sign up for the $1 a month exclusive content access now while prices last.